Hey, so I heard there were like four videos around diffusion in transformers and that I was one of them. So I decided to like make it five and two. So I'm going to go over for you essentially a overview of diffusion in transformers, including like a, the full architecture code, everything. So that's what this video is. Starting off with this particular research paper, Scalable Diffusion Models with Transformers, put out by two researchers from UC Berkeley and NYU. Uh, and then if you notice, if you go down, it's actually like uh, the main per the main researcher was uh, like uh, doing an internship at Meta during the time. And then if you notice the date here, March 2nd, 2023, but like the original date was November 2022, which uh, if you know your history around these things, that's when um, ChatGPT came out basically publicly, and then uh, ChatGPT like 3.5 and, and 4, and then uh, March 2nd, 2023, like this like this release time was when they released uh, Llama, <laughs> and then so uh, like <clears throat> there's a lot of uh, art like a uh, like like, 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 I, like they didn't actually fully release like like uh, that's right Meta never actually released like formally released Llama like Llama One Llama One was leaked and then uh, they released uh, Vicuna. Or they didn't, <laughs> but Vicuna came out around this period. I'm remembering my history around these things now. But so this paper got like really overshadowed by a lot of things. It's kind of just the, the point that I want to express with this overall. But so this particular research paper, they're the first ones that uh, actually create it and they create this framework here, right? Which is essentially uh, the bottom line, like the most simplistic explanation for this overall is, is that uh, diffusion in transformers is essentially a uh, diffusion decoder and then a transformers encoder. And we'll, I'll go deeper into the architecture here in, in just a second, but like uh, I'll also leave a link to this research paper here if you want to go through like the actual like original research paper around these things where all of it um, originates from. It's at, so this is uh, like uh, almost a four-year-old concept at this point, just uh, highlighting and pointing that out. But so uh, here's kind of a, a simple explainer within this, right? And I like this <clears throat> first diagram that we're looking at here better than the one that we're looking at there in the research paper. Reason being is because they actually blow up the transformer block here, right? So uh, essentially you have your diffusion and transformer uh, block here and that, that block that we're looking at and then transformers architecture all around the diffusion architecture, right? Uh, and then so within that, you can see that you have your multi-head self-attention, which includes like your soft max and your gradient descent. And then you also have uh, your uh, like ReLU or GLU or whatever it is, like your your um, gradients within uh, like uh, in your point wise feed forward. Uh, and that's kind of just uh, putting these together. Uh, that is like the transformers architecture inside. And it's actually like, uh, depicted here as inside, like, uh, I think this is the best way to explain it, right? The second image that we're looking at here. So <clears throat> the best way to, to envision it is again, like you have the, the transformer mechanism is the encoder, right? So self-attention encoder, uh, and then a diffusion decoder. Uh, and then that's kind of just how it goes through. Uh, and then you can see the architecture here, right? So diving into this is like kind of a deeper uh, explanation, like an overall explanation. So first of all, what is diffusion? Diffusion models are a type of generative AI that learn to create data like images by gradually denoising random noise. So the four process of diffusion is that you start with a real image and then you add noise step by step until it becomes pure static. Uh, and then when you reverse that process, so all the, our image generation models, they're reverse diffusion models, right? Because they're doing this process in reverse. So you're training a model to undo the noise step, uh, turning static back into an actual realistic image. And then so think of it like teaching a painter to recognize faint outlines hidden in static and slowly bringing them into focus. And so why transformers? Tr traditionally, diffusion models use UNETs or convolutional neural networks. Uh, I've gone over CNNs or convolutional ne neural networks a lot on this channel. Right? I like the architecture overall, but transformers it's like the, the the same architecture behind gpt they it brings three advantages when it comes to diffusion models specifically one is global awareness so transformers process images as a as sequences of patches so they can see the whole picture instead of just local regions two is scalability transformers scale well with data and compute often outperforming cnn's 
once you get to those larger sizes, right? Like that's that's the the trade off within this is just massive amounts of compute, which is why I like CNN models, right? Because it doesn't require massive amounts of compute and GPU. But once you dump massive amounts of compute and GPU into the transformer models, they do outperform the the typical CNN or the right. typical like CNN backbone architecture of diffusion in that typical sense. Flexibility, transformers handle text, images, audio, and more, making them ideal for multi-modal diffusion systems. So how do diffusion transformers work? The core idea is that you replace the unit de denoiser with a transformer. So like you're replacing uh, like the, uh, this uh, mechanism up here, right? With the transformer mechanism. And then so to patchify the image, you break an image into small patches, like four by four pixels. Then you flatten them into a sequence of tokens, just like words in a sentence. Then you add noise to that image. During training, noise is added to the image according to a schedule. Each training step corresponds to a time value. And then so uh, this, like, this time value element is extremely important within diffusion models specifically. It's the advantage that diffusion models have over transformers architecture. Uh, and specifically, and then so within diffusion in transformers architecture, specifically uh, when you're talking about like temporal processes, things like that, uh, these models are tend to outperform in those areas specifically because of time embedding. So the, the transformer needs to know how much noise is pre present and a sinusoidal or learned embedding of this timestamp is <coughs> injected into the model. And then you have your transformer blocks. So each block uses self-attention plus feed forward layers conditioned on the time embedding via uh, layer normalization and cross attention. So it's, you literally have a transformer block uh, wrapped around the uh, diffusion model, right? So that's a diffusion in transformers. It's like kind of like a sandwich, right? It's like transformers, diffusion in the middle, transformers and so in, in the middle. There. And so unpatchify after processing, the sequence of tokens is reshaped back into an image. The model predicts the noise that was added and then also it allows you to create a training objective. So the model learns to predict the noise so it can gradually denoise images during sampling. Uh, and then that's kind of what this whole architecture comes together to, to be able to do within that process, right? Then your next step is a sampling process. So to generate an image, you start from random noise, then you run the transformer repeatedly, predicting and removing noise step by step. And then after hundreds or thousands of steps, a coherent image appears. And then so this is important to highlight within this because this process overall is different than the diffusion process specifically uh, because of this, right? It's the models predicting removing the noise step by step, just like it, it's, it would predict like next tokens. It's exactly what you're training it to do, except for the, the next token is the next noise step. So why does this matter? Because it's a better scaling diffusion and transformers can outperform units when models get big, right? That's the big thing and the big advantage. And then like, uh, when you're talking about small models, which is like why I always on this channel, like, uh, when I'm playing around with these things, I'm playing around with CNNs because like, and, and it, like in small model tests, the CNN model is going to outperform or be just as equivalent, uh, to the transformers architecture. It's not until you get into like the, large numbers of billions of parameters when uh, this starts to matter. Unified architecture. So same transformer backbone can be used for text, video, or multimodal diffusion. Said the art. Recent large scale diffusion in, transform in transformers. So like all of the uh, current gen models achieve best in class performance on benchmarks. And then so uh, all of these, like the, the current gen models with regards to like, so um, it has been 100% true that there's like, uh, if it's like, um, chat GPT four, uh, for like, I, I don't know, like, oh, <laughs> they, they started getting crazy with the model numbers. Right. But up until recently, uh, it was a 100% different, uh, model that would generate images. Uh, like it was like Sora or whatever they call it, but with diffusion in it, transformers, uh, these models do have like, uh, the like this capability embedded within the model that's kind of car like part of this architecture uh overall and an advantage within it uh, a lot of the companies are experimenting with it like they don't like none of these companies release the internals of their architecture so i can't tell you 100 uh that they do that every single one of the models that they've released has uh, diffusion in transformers but it's likely that they do and so at least 
key takeaways, diffusion equals, uh, well, we know that Claude doesn't, <laughs> key takeaways, uh, diffusion equals denoising and noise into data, transformers equals powerful sequence processors, and diffusion and transformers equals diffusion denoiser powered by a transformer. Uh, end result is that you get sharper, more globally consistent images and better scaling with lots of compute as the trade-off. Like it's, that's the big, it's a big trade-off, right? Because like these models are very computationally expensive. Like, and, and, and that's um, the trade-off that you get from wrapping um, a transformer model around a diffusion model, right? Like it's like, a, they're both big models to begin with. But so uh, now let's go ahead and, and take a look at the code here. But so within this and, and with saying that, I do have an example of a small model that we're able to run here. Uh, and then I was just able to run this on a CPU very specifically. And then so uh, just going through and uh, explaining this code here for you, like first, so the first block, that main, main block that you have here is this config file. Uh, and then this is where you would configure, so you can configure both the data set and the uh, size of the model. So the data set that it's defaulting to right now is SciFAR 10. If you want to switch it to MNIST, you switch, uh, you want to switch the, um, just type in MNIST here rather than SciFAR 10. And then channel, so you would switch to one. That's, that's the only things that you would have to do. So uh, MNIST here, channel is equal one. Uh, and then everything else is good there. If you want to make this model bigger, there's two ways that you can make it bigger. You can make it bigger here, and you can make it bigger here, right? So width and depth, which is just adding parameters to the model by increasing these numbers. By increasing these numbers, you want to increase them uh, mathematically. And, and so like generally speaking, like you want to like double, well, like, uh, it, 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 you want to make sure that the, the math checks out uh, over, overall is the, the bottom line it, when you play around with this. Um, playing around with uh, anything like uh, like down here, uh, I wouldn't really recommend. Um, it's like the big things that you would play around with would be here uh, and then changing the data set to MNIST by this and this. And then so those two levers there. And then uh, from here you have the data and then so it's just whichever data set that you choose, it's loading there. Uh, and then so you've got, here you've got your diffusion schedule, right? So it's full on, like full on diffusion model uh, that you have here, right? And it just like 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 uh, full on diffusion, uh, and then you've got kind of like utilities, like, like the the like uh, wrappers, like and, and kind of like uh, stuff that you need um, around the model, and then you've got your actual your diffusion and transformers uh, components, and then so you can see here very specifically, you've got your like full on transformer block here, right? And then so it's uh, full on there, and then you've got your mini, and then you've got your modification to the uh, decoder there. And then you've got your model outputs, and then we're training, just using, utilizing the standard, standard uh, Atom, Atom W optimization in this instance. Uh, and then you could change and adjust some things there if you wanted to on the training. Um, and then we're just doing sampling. So same thing here, if you wanted to, really wanted to, you could adjust like some of the sampling as well. Uh, and then, so here we go. We run it for a few for a few different epochs and then we can see the training steps as we go through. Run it for a total of uh, 600 steps here at the end. Uh, and then loss goes down uh, pretty nice, although it does start to, so we, we stopped it like where I would want to stop it, right? Because loss starts to increase, it starts to creep back up there. So. Um, maybe we could like we could have stopped like maybe somewhere here or like in between would be the best. Uh, but then so here's our outputs, uh, and then uh, yes, it's still saved there. And then so you have all of the um, outputs here that you can reference there. Uh, and then so this is the output again from the SciFAR 10. So if you do uh, MNIST digits, it would be like um, digits, right? <laughs> so like uh, like the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, and zero, uh, and then. Um, that's it overall and then so uh here you are and then so here you go and then again if you want this uh to to turn out better uh, and then to like um be uh, better performance uh on these samples and like uh, etc then again you can in definitely increase the size of the model uh either by width or depth and then by doing that you increase your amount of compute which is the big trade-off within this right and that's the big thing to highlight overall within this overall is that like you're trading compute right like you're like this is uh massive amounts of compute like the big thing about like transformers architecture overall what makes it good to me is that it's like a i've mentioned this concept before it's like prepaying the compute via a credit card right uh, and then so via this diffusion and 
Transformers block, you get to prepay some of that diffusion ar like um, architecture as well. <laughs> and so uh, the, like the, the trade-off for that though is that these are both huge models, right? You're taking a diffusion model and a Transformers model and then sandwiching, like a, again, like sandwiching a diffusion block in between the Transformers blocks uh, and then essentially within that, like it's, uh, you do get compute, you do get benefits from that to, to, to prepay the compute, but it's massive amounts of compute that you need in order, like you have to have a huge bankroll in order to be able to prepay the compute in this instance. It's kind of like how it breaks down, right? Um, but so I'll leave a link to all of this, both the, the collab notebook, the research paper, the, the um, this uh, particular doc here, as well as the research paper that I accidentally closed out. And if you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.